So I'm Melanie Knoll. I'm a clinical psychology PhD student at Dalhousie University. Um, so I'm training to become a clinical psychologist, which means part of my time I treat and assess children with a variety of mental health and health disorders. Um, but the, a large part of what I do is research. You know, just 30 years ago, it was widely believed that infants couldn't feel pain. Uh, today we know that that's wrong and how early pain is processed in the brain and in the body can have huge impacts both physically and psychologically on how children develop over time. Um, so we've come a long way in our understanding of pain in childhood, but there's still important questions that we need to answer. And really the field has moved towards taking what we have learned through research and trying to put that into practice to improve pain management for children. Memory for pain is very important. Um, we know that pain isn't over when the needle ends. How children remember painful experiences can follow them throughout life. Um, children's memories for pain predict how they'll cope with pain in the future. And these memories are rooted very early in life. We know that six month olds can actually form a memory of a painful procedure that can then affect how they experience pain at a subsequent or a future procedure. Um, and also these memories for pain in childhood predict whether you'll avoid medical care as adults. And there's some suggestion that children's memories for pain may even initiate the development of chronic pain later in life. So taking all of that together, it seems that the memory for pain is as important as the actual experience of pain itself. The fascinating thing I think about memory is that it's not like a tape recorder. We can't play back an experience and have it be exactly like what happened. Um, so memories are constantly changing. And some children remember painful experiences in a very negative way. They might remember pain as being worse than it actually was. Um, but some children actually develop positive memories and they may remember a painful experience as being not so bad. Um, so I'm really fascinated in how can we predict and what, what predicts whether some children will go on to develop these negative memories, um, whereas others can develop these positive memories. Some important research questions can't be answered in a clinical setting. Um, that's why in our lab we often recruit um, and rely on children and families from the community to come into our center and where we can create situations and study pain in a more controlled setting. And that allows us to get at important um, questions that we couldn't in a real life situation. Um, so in my study, I did just that. I, I um, recruited children and families from the community in Halifax and surrounding areas. And half of the children who came to the center uh, believed that they had to give a speech and do a tricky math task in front of judges. So they were a little bit nervous. Um, the other half of children believed that they'd have to watch a nature video. So they weren't very nervous at all. Um, after that, they completed a pain task called the cold water task. Now this is a safe and acceptable way to induce mild to moderate amounts of pain. Children put their hands in a cold, basically co cooler of um, water, and the task is completely under the control of the child, so they can remove their hand at any time. Um, but it's a, it's a way for us to look at pain in a safe, uh, controlled setting. So half of the children were a little bit nervous, half weren't, and they completed the cold water task. Then we asked them how scary and painful it was. And then two weeks later, we, we called children on the telephone and they shared their memories for that experience. One month after the first visit, they came back to the lab and did the cold water task one more time. Um, they also told us how painful and scary it was. And that allowed us to look at um, an initial pain experience, their memory for that experience, and then any changes that might have occurred in how they thought about and experienced pain over time. I'm still analyzing the data, um, but I'm excited that to share some of the results with you today. Um, it appears that uh, we were right, that children who experience more 
fear or are more nervous before a painful experience tended to develop those negative memories of pain. Whereas children who were calmer and less anxious, they tended to develop more positive memories. Once those memories are developed, children who remember things as being worse than they actually were, so they remember it as being more painful and more scary, when they actually experience pain again, they think it's more painful. Um, on the other hand, children who have realistic memories that are accurate, or even positive memories, so these are children who remember it as not being so bad, when they come back to experience pain again, they don't show as much pain and fear. Um, so this is important because it shows that we can do something with children to reduce their pain before, during, and after a painful experience. So before a painful experience like a needle, we can help children reduce their anxiety by using different coping strategies, lower how nervous they are prior to a painful experience. During something like a needle or an immunization, we know that there's effective ways to reduce pain. Uh, we can distract children by asking them to listen to their iPod or talking about different things, looking in a different direction, and also they can use numbing cream where the needle will go in. That's very effective during. But this research really shows that we shouldn't stop there, that children, their memories and how they think about pain afterwards can really play an important role of how they'll cope the next time. It's hard for families to know in a sea of information on the internet what is actual credible information. How do I help my child when they undergo a needle or have a medical procedure? Um, and we really, at the Center for Pediatric Pain Research, we promote using strategies that have been shown to work. Strategies based on research. And on our center's website, we have a list of excellent evidence-based strategies and resources that parents and children can use to reduce their pain and, and uh, cope better during medical procedures.